Hallelujah, hallelujah. I would like to welcome you once again to another episode of uh, Victorious Living, or rather Christian Authority and because of that, the victorious living that the Lord has given us. That is the ability to live a victorious life. Today you find all around us, especially these times of uh, Corona, you know, uh, COVID-19 and all that. People are so afraid. One thing, my dear brother, my dear sister, we need to understand is fear is the opposite of faith. That is why when Jesus, once, when he was traveling in the boat with the disciples across the sea and uh, there was a great windstorm and Jesus was sleeping in the bow and the disciples said, Lord, are you not concerned that we are all going to perish? But Jesus said, oh, you of little faith, why are you fearful? So they were not full of faith, but they were full of fear. So today you and I need to understand in these times, what can really sustain us is faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he will never leave you, he will never forsake you. I mean, God's covenant promises are so secure. So my dear brother, my dear, I want to take you through these episodes. Maybe years from now you will say, there was a time, there was a big pandemic, like you might even refer, like the Spanish flu, all that, you know, so many people were dying. But you will be able to say that the word of God in the book of Psalm 91 was true. Thousand or ten thousand may fall beside you, but you will not fall because the Lord will keep you and sustain you. Hallelujah. So today we need to know the essence of Christian, victorious Christian life. One, you need to understand is we must know which is the source of the victory. The source of the victory is not in man, but the source of the victory in the spirit of the living God. That is why when you read the book of Zechariah chapter 4, there was a great task before Zerubbabel to go back to Jerusalem, to rebuild its walls and repair the temple. But there was so much of opposition, which in the word is referred to as mountains. And the word of God says very clearly, he's asking, O Zerubbabel, what are these mountains before you? I will dash it, I will just powder it. I will just level it to the ground and make a way for you to achieve or to, to fulfill my purpose in your life. So I want to tell you, my dear brother, my dear sister, that it is not that we don't rely upon our abilities or the abilities of anyone else with us, but we rely upon the spirit of the living God. Amen. If you can say an amen to that, then I think it will be a new beginning to today's word that you're going to hear. So one is we need to understand what is the source of the victory. And once you understand the source of the victory, then you will be able to understand what is the essence of this Christian, victorious Christian life. You know, it's not just to know what, where the source is from, but we also need to have a proper understanding or revelation. What does it mean to live a victorious Christian life? So we heard in the last episode that it was a life, a triumphant life in Christ. Because where Christ is with us, there is no scope for any failure. That is why in the book of uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 31, the word of God very clearly says, it is a challenge. If God be for us, who can be against us? Nobody. Nobody can on the whole earth. I not on the earth. I would say, I dare say, the whole universe. Nobody can be against you because if the creator of the universe is with you. So today we will we will uh, go into another aspect of what the essence of Christi victorious Christian life is. We are a conqueror in Christ. We need to understand that it is not our abilities, but it is the ability of Christ in us. That is why you know when. Uh, when you read the parables, there is an instant where Jesus talks about a, a rich man. Actually, in some scriptures, he's called a rich wise fool. He's called a fool. A rich man, anyway, forget it. A rich man came to Jesus and said, what should I do to, 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 to attain eternal life? Then Jesus told him, you know, you sell all that you have and uh, follow me. But then uh, finally he took a decision that I'd rather cling on to my riches rather than cling on to Jesus, the source of life. Anyway. That is not the issue. The issue is, then Jesus said that it is so difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And he gave a comparison that it is easier for a camel through, to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. It was not saying that rich men cannot enter into the kingdom of God. But it is only saying that if you make the richness or the wealth an idol, then that idol will not permit you to enter into the kingdom of God. Therefore, then the disciples ask, then, Lord, who will be able to enter into the kingdom of God? Then Jesus gives a great 
biblical truth. He says, with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. See, it does not mean that, it is not talking about uh, the ability of man or the ability of God. It is actually talking of faith. That is, when you unite together with, with man, it means in a carnal, in a worldly sense, if you try to get something done, or you are in partnership with man, partnership with the world, it is impossible. But with God, with God meaning when you are in partnership with God, when you are in partnership with His covenant promises, which is in the word of God, all things are possible. Because you are having the... So, when you partner with God and believe in His word, you will find that all things are possible because it is not you who is working in that circumstance, but it is God. Because I say the word of God very clearly says in the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 16. You see, sometimes, you know, you have to take a, have a little bit of courage to believe in someone. Because if you are going to do something, if you are going to take a risk, you must have confidence in that person with whom you are going to try and achieve that purpose. That is why in the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 16 it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because if whoso believeth, it is the power of God unto salvation. So here it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, which actually means I am not ashamed to believe in the gospel of Christ. Because if I believe, it is the power of God to save me from whatever situation. Today I want to tell you, my dear brother, my dear, in the circumstance that you and I, or the whole world is facing today, salvation is not just restricted to something that happens to you after you die. Salvation is something which happens to you right now. Because the Jesus very clearly says, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand, which is already here. That is why again Jesus says, no, in uh, the book of John chapter, the gospel of John chapter 3 verse 3 and 3 verse 5 it says, Truly, truly I say unto you, unless you are born again you cannot see the kingdom of God. Truly, truly I say unto you, unless you are born of water and spirit you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So, these are things that are supposed to happen to you once you, even while you are alive here. Kingdom of God and eternity, eternal life is not something to be experienced after you die. Many people, many believers feel that. That is something of the afterworld. Right now, you are supposed to live in misery. No, my dear brother, my dear sister. You are not supposed to live in misery or poverty or in illness because God says that you are Israel. And the, and the translation of the word Israel is prince and princess with God. Because God is the king of kings and the lord of lords. So I want to tell you that God has ordained us with victorious Christian life here. He has given us dominion. That's why when you look at the book of Genesis chapter 1, it says, after creation or creating man, God has given him dominion over everything that is created. So today you need to understand that you are and I are supposed to live as conquerors. That is, we have conquered everything that comes against us. You know, you cannot be a conqueror unless you have fought a fight. And you cannot have, be a conqueror unless there is an enemy. You cannot conquer yourself. That is why Paul in the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished my race, and I have kept my faith. So there is a process of opposition, but it all depends on how you fight. And how in this fight, you are relying upon your faith. And you are completing the race also. It is such people who, as the word there says very clearly, that the righteous judge will give them a crown of righteousness. And again he continues to say that this crown of righteousness is not only to him, but for everybody who anxiously waits for the coming of the second coming of the Lord. So, you and I are supposed to be more, not a conqueror, but more than conquerors. This is what you need to understand. See, conqueror is very ordinary. You find so much of things happening. You know, people are successful. People do this. People overcome situations. But God says that you are supposed to be more than a conqueror because in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, he says, And to him, that is our Lord, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, much more than you can think or ask or think, according to the power that works in us. So, you are not just a conqueror. You are much more than a conqueror. So that is what God wants us to experience in this Christian life. Not a dejected, hopeless, depressed life. No. 
that is not from god that is from the devil trying to destroy you try to make your mind you know so so out of focus you know it it confuses you so much that you will not be then later able to see the truth in god's word you will not be able to focus on jesus as the word says in the book of hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of my faith you are blinded by your depression by your hopelessness by your sadness by your grief all those things are things which prevent you from really seeing jesus hallelujah so today you need to understand hallelujah that uh, uh, the the victorious christian life that is where the word of god very clearly says in the book of romans chapter 8 verse 37 yet in all these things uh, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us hallelujah actually i think we need to read a little bit of that word because uh, it shows uh, we are more than conquerors what is the circumstance in which uh, Paul is able to say that we are more than conquerors because you unless you know the situation that you are facing you cannot describe the qual- the quality or the quantity the awesomeness of that victory that is already there so when you read the word in the book of Romans chapter 8 was you know what is the situation that Paul was facing and then he said he says in spite of all this yet in all these things we are more than conquerors the situation described very clearly in uh, verse 35 and 36 it says who shall separate us from the love of christ shall tribulation shall distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for your sake we are killed all day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter so it is that is the situation you know everything that you are facing today many believers are facing the situation especially because of covid-19 and also the spin off from that on the health side on the financial side on the relationship sides you know people have lost so many of their near and dear ones lost businesses lost their health i you know there is if you look all around there is so much of misery all over the world but the word of god very clearly says in spite of all these things and we are even almost at the point of death in spite of all these things nothing nothing will be able to take us away from the love of christ and in spite of all these things yet not nothing has subdued us nothing has taken away the faith that we have in christ because the word of god very clearly says in the book of romans chapter 1 verse 17 that the righteous live by faith so nothing has been able to take away our focus our dependence our trust in the word of god to live a life of faith in relying upon jesus and his word so he says yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us his love is something which is unceasing it is without any barrier it is without any limit without any conditions he loves us i mean there is such a beautiful comparable verse in again in the book of romans chapter 5 verses 3 to 5 i'll read it out for you it says you know these are things my dear brother these are the apt words that today you and i need to hear you and i need to hear because word of god says again in the book of john chapter 6 verse 26 it says that the holy spirit will bring to your remembrance all the things that i have spoken to you all the assurances that i have given to you the holy spirit will at the appropriate time bring to your remembrance the appropriate word that will up- uplift you that will uphold you that will never allow you to slip or to fall and to be destroyed so the word of god says in the book of romans chapter 5 verses 3 to 5 it says not only that but we also glory in tribulation knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope now hope does not disappoint because the love of god has been poured out in our hearts by the holy spirit who was given to us so you need to understand it is the love of god that sustains us that upholds us the love of god is the is the manifested in our lives in the person of our lord jesus christ that is why god so loved the world that he gave his son so the manifestation of the love of the father for each one of us is the substitutionary sacrifice of his son jesus by which you and i were made co-heirs with christ you and i were made members of the household of god and therefore it is a love of god and it goes on to say in the book of romans chapter 8 it continues 
Yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Why? Because it is through him who loved us. Because unless you are able to experience and trust in the love of God for you, none of these things will become a reality because it is a love that gives you the strength to face. To face what? Says uh, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword or any other thing. It is the love of God which upholds you, which supports you, gives you the strength to go forward. So today, my dear brother, my dear sister, again there is a beautiful word in the book of Epistle of John. It says, perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect love and knowledge or revelation of the love of the Father for each one of us takes away fear from our lives because there will be no place for fear just like there is no fear no place for darkness when there is light so light will dispel the darkness similarly the love of the father knowledge of the love of the father love of Jesus our Lord and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives will dispel the darkness that the devil wants to bring into your life that is why even in 1 Peter 2 9 and 10 it says that you have been drawn out from darkness into his marvelous light. The light of the love of the Father. The light of the love of Jesus for us. Amen and Amen. Then again it continues to say that the reason why you are able to say that. Verses 37 to 39. Sorry 38 to 39 goes on to say. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So when you read verse 38 and 39, it uh, shows without a shadow of doubt, nothing good or bad, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Sometimes, you know, uh, a distressful situation, maybe an illness or uh, maybe the loss of a loved one or maybe a financial loss. People get so desperate and after that they get so angry with God and they reject God. Something like that. And the other side of it, that is the bad situations, contrary situations. The other is good situations, apparently good. That is, you were not doing well but now God blessed you and you are now prosperous in life. You are prosperous in your business. You know, so the, 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 the positive things, that also can separate you from God, Jesus. Because after some time, the business or your prosperity becomes an idol and you are not able to love Jesus or follow him. Just like, like I told you earlier, that rich young fool who was very rich, but his riches prevented him from following Jesus, which he wanted to do, but he valued his wealth more than that of Jesus. So it prevented him. So neither good nor bad, that's what he says, shall separate us from the love of God. That must be the real heart of a believer. He does not look at the circumstances to love God. Whatever be the circumstance, whether it's good or bad, he will still love God. That is why you must be able to give up things, my dear brother, my dear sister. You must be able to like Paul in the book of Philippians chapter 3. He was a very rich man. He was a very educated man. He was a man who had great uh, uh, standing in society. He was uh, a scholar. I mean, he, was, uh, he had all the attributes that a Jew could even aspire in his time. But yet he said, I decided to give up everything and consider everything that I held on to as rubbish for the excellence of the knowledge of my Lord and Master Jesus Christ. Amen. That should be our attitude. So there should be nothing that we, will separate us from the love of Father, the love of Jesus. It is only then you will be a partner with Christ and be a conqueror. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, we know. I mean, he lived such a simple life. It was not his, uh, he did not do any magic or anything. But what sustained him, what, what uh, allowed him or gave him the ability to fulfill his mission or purpose here was his dependence on the Father, receiving from the Father, receiving, uh, rather having that love relationship with the Father. So today you and I need to understand that we can fulfill our destiny here on this earth only when we have a personal loving relationship with the Father. And when that is done, he will ensure 
that whatever is his purpose for you in this earth will be fulfilled. Nobody can prevent it because the word of God very clearly says in the book of Revelations that whatever door that the Lord has opened for you, nobody can shut it. And whatever door the Lord has shut for you, nobody can open it. So today as a believer you need to understand that. Hallelujah, that today as you're facing these difficult times, especially like this Corona or COVID-19 and all that, you should never get desperate. You should never lose hope, but put your trust in Jesus. Because then you will become a conqueror. Sorry, not a conqueror. You will become more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. You will become someone who is invincible. Hallelujah. Because like I told you earlier, when we put our trust in Jesus, he will be able to do much more than you can ask or think much more than our wildest expectation he will be able to do in our lives. And when you do that, there's something else that happens. When you, be, when, you, when you become more than a conqueror, then you become an overcomer. That is, no situation can keep you away or block you. That is why when you read the word in 1 John 5, 4, it says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. This is, my dear brother, my dear sister, one thing that you need to understand. It is not that we have overcome the world, but our faith has overcome the world. Our faith in what? Our faith in Jesus. Our faith in the word of God. That is why the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says, In it, that is in the word of God, the righteousness of God is revealed. And, and the just live by faith. From faith unto faith unto faith. And therefore, from glory unto glory unto glory, the just shall live. So, our faith in the person of the Son of God, to the person of Jesus Christ, that is what gives us the victory. And that is uh, what... So, we are born, like the word very clearly says, we are born not of corruptible seed. Let's read that in the book of Peter. Very clearly says, our birth, I would dare say, when you are born again, you are born again just like, uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Because if you are, if the word of God says very clearly in, hallelujah, in the book of Romans chapter 8, it says that we are co-heirs with Christ. That if you are children, then we are heirs and we are co-heirs with Christ. Verse 18, 17, 18 onwards, if you, if you read. Then you and I have to have the same DNA as Jesus. The DNA of Jesus was because he was born from the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. So today you and I are born again. The Gospel of John 3, 3 and 3, 5. We are born again by, just like Jesus was born again, by the DNA that comes from the word of God. Therefore, you and I are co heirs are members of the household of God. This is something, my dear brother, my dear sister, you need to understand. And I, I want to tell you, this is not my imagination. I want to tell you, take you to the word of God in 1 Peter, hallelujah, 1 Peter 1, 23. It says, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Hallelujah. I want to read it again. Having been born again. So born again is referred to in John, Gospel of John 3, 3 and 3, 5. So there a death has taken place and we are born again as a new creation in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And what is the seed which gave us life? This is the word of God. Again, we know from the book of Luke chapter 8, verse 11, says very clearly that the word of God is a seed. Or the seed is the word of God. Hallelujah. So, when you, I think let's read that. The book of Luke chapter 8, verse 11. So, we need, to, we need to connect up these words. Hallelujah. The book of Luke chapter 8, verse 11 says, Hallelujah. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The seed. I mean, it is a parable of the sower. The seed is the word of God. Now, here it says in 1 Peter 1, 23, it says, Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. It is the same word which was a seed for the birth of Jesus. Because the Gospel of John one John 1 14 says the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld the glory of that word the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and full of truth so Jesus was born 
from the word of God. A person who is born again, according to John 3, 3 and 3, 5, is also born of the same word of God. That is why you and I have, when we are born again, we are new in Christ. That is why again it says in 1, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Whosoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone. The old DNA has gone. And the new has come. The new DNA in the image and likeness and the mind of Christ has come into our lives. So it is this that is what is talked of here in 1 John 5, 4. That for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Because Jesus overcame the world. Jesus, because he was God, he was the son of God. And I dare say you and I are also sons and daughters of God. Because when you, my dear brother, my dear sister, you must read the word in the book of John, the gospel of John, after Jesus was resurrected, he tells, Hallelujah, I am going to my father and your father. I am going to my God and your God. So the, the, everything has changed. Our, our status has changed. We are no longer strangers or foreigners. But along with the saints, we are fellow members of the household of God. My dear brother, this is what a Christian needs to understand. So this knowledge will give you power. This knowledge of who you are. That there is no more any identity crisis about who you are. Hallelujah. I dare say that this is the knowledge that gives you the power. Hallelujah. So it says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Then verse 5 says... Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. So it is this knowledge of Jesus, hallelujah, that gives us the ability to become an overcomer. Just like Jesus was an overcomer. Because when I have, uh, lose my identity and I become one with God, then what happens is, what exactly is there in the book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 20? It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. So the I, the old I, the old man, the carnal man, the, 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 the faithless, faithless man, I would dare say. Uh, you know, everything that was uh, uh, led by the flesh, that man has died at the cross of Calvary with Jesus uh, on the same cross. And then it says, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. That is a new life, new DNA, born of the word of God, just like Jesus. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. The Son of God had a certain amount of faith, not certain amount, had faith. And you and I are destined to have the same level of faith as Jesus Christ has had. And Jesus is described as the person who loved me so much that he died for me. He gave up his life for me. So you and I can expect to live a victorious Christian life uh, when we, we can become an overcomer of the world when you and I become uh, come into a union with Christ. You and I have the same nature of Jesus Christ. You and I have the same DNA of Christ. Uh, and that is possible only if as, uh, as mentioned in the book of Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23, that having been born again, not of corruptible seed which came from our fathers uh, but uh, incorruptible seed through the word of God which lives and abides forever. So today you and I need to understand that is what God is planning for us. A spiritual being living in the nature, in the image and likeness of God, exercising the same kingdom and authority that God, Jesus exercised here. And therefore you will be able to be, live a victorious Christian life and be more than a conqueror. Amen, amen, amen.